<laughs> no, man, we have an issue though. It's not all fun and games today. We have a problem we need to address. Hey, hey, look at these. Look at these comments. No, there's nothing funny about that. That's a little bit funny. Stella, you're not amused. He just farted and laughed at the same time. <laughs> Walking down to area 11, have not been there since last week. I'll be curious to see if my duckweed control measures have uh, done anything at all. Let's go find out. Hmm, that does not look too good. If you look in the pond, the duckweed is as rampant as ever, but there is an interesting pattern right there. It's kind of like a Harry Potter lightning scar shaped deal. I wonder where that came from. Let's look at it from a different angle. That's pretty interesting, look at that. It's like a whole ditch of duckweed cut out. I mean, when I did scoop it out, I focused on this quadrant right here, so maybe my efforts did do something, but I mean, I couldn't scoop out the whole pond. It just took way too much energy. And there's actually some patterns in the weeds. I don't know if you guys can see all those little snake-like patterns. Someone's been down here. If you guys look, the grass always falls straight because this is the way I always walk into the pond. But someone has been trampling through right towards this direction down that way. That is very unusual. I guess I'll just make a new path right here. All right, we're coming. Oh, big frog right there. That was a giant frog. Oh, there's something else right there. Woo! Spider, 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 spider. Movement, movement. Big spider, big movement. Water's looking really clear today. Yeah, you know what? I mean, to me, the duckweed looks more sparse than it was before. Definitely more sparse. Maybe my efforts did do something. And if you guys look, it kind of looks like, look at that pattern right there. It looks like someone's been fishing a frog, but it's not in a straight pattern. You guys see that? See that? See those designs in the weeds? I mean, let me know, but something's been going on down here and I'm not sure, I'm not quite sure what it is. Oh, look at that. Look at those bubbles right here. That's something big right there. I don't know what that is. The bubbles right there too. Look at all these bubbles. Let's, let's take our net. Let's try to catch some stuff. All right. Oh yeah. Let's see what Area 11 has in store for us today. Oh, I see something dead right here. This is a, look at that, dead tadpole right here. That's not good. Oh, it smells disgusting over here. That is a nutrient rich bottom. Oh man, things ain't looking good right now. Oh, something just moved. Oh my gosh, that's a jumbo. Let's take a look at this guy. That's gotta be the biggest tadpole I've ever seen. Look at this guys, look what we've got in our net right here. Ah. Oh. I mean, I'm gonna have to assume that this guy, look at this thing. This is a tadpole. Look, look how big he is. He's a freaking monster. They should definitely make a lure shaped like a leech tail with a big fat head. That would be, look, that'd be like a little bass candy. Pretty much as big as my hand. That's how big he is. Big boy right there. All right, you fatty. Fat little boy. We'll let you go. Get back in your pond. So now we need to talk about the real issue at hand. So here's the deal. When I started this project of turning the storm drain pond into a healthy fishery, I came across all this vegetation and I learned from you guys that it is an invasive weed called duckweed right here. And what it does, it actually steals the oxygen from the pond and it creates an unsuitable environment for pretty much all living things inside the pond. So obviously, I tried to figure out ways to remove the duckweed. Came across some uh, different methods. Obviously, you use pesticides, but we're trying not to do that. That could probably, that would probably just wipe out everything in the pond, and it's probably extremely expensive. So that's a last resort. So I was looking for natural, organic ways to get rid of it. We tried scooping out a bunch of good duckweed, but it's just so heavy and so difficult to do. I don't know if I really made much of a dent. I think I made a little dent, but as you can see, we still have a lot more duckweed to compete with. So then what I did is I thought, let's use a biological means to control the duckweed. 
and I researched what kinds of things eat duckweed, went on YouTube, and look what I found. I found videos of goldfish annihilating duckweed, literally just like slurping it up. It's like their favorite snack ever. So I thought, oh, what the heck? Let's get some goldfish and let's throw it in here and see if, uh, oh, there's a bird hunting over here. I think, he, I don't know what he's hunting. He must be hunting some kind of fish. I don't think birds will eat tadpoles, will they? There's a bird hunting on that rock over there. I lost my train of thought. Uh, oh yeah, so I was like, let's get some goldfish, put them in here and let them take care of the duckweed. But then later, we found I found out that was not the smartest thing to do. And here's why. We've got an article right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. If you dump your pet goldfish into a lake, it will grow into an enormous pest. So right here, we've got a picture of your average everyday goldfish. Then in the middle, it's a pretty huge goldfish. Then to the far left, it is a gluttonous monstrosity of a goldfish. I mean, that thing is scary looking. Consider this your annual reminder. Don't dump your pet goldfish into a lake. This reminder came a little too late for me, unfortunately. Invasive species are, generally speaking, not so great. When an organism moves into a territory where it lacks natural predators, it can interrupt the entire ecosystem by scarfing down local resources and killing important species. That's not what we want. Left to thrive in waterways, these gluttonous fish are growing to weigh as much as four pounds. Goldfish bought from a pet store can grow up to four pounds. I mean, you probably buy them, they probably weigh a few grams or something, something some really small amount, maybe 10 grams at most. That's nuts. They've also caused trouble in ponds and lakes across the U.S. Domestic goldfish, let's see, grows as large as its resources will allow. And in this pond right here, they have unlimited forage in the form of duckweed. So in theory, my goldfish could grow the monster size that you saw in that picture at the very top. And they don't just eat fish flakes either. In the wild, goldfish are carnivorous. At best, their feeding habits, trawling along the bottom and in the body of water, disrupt sediment and make it harder for other fish to eat. At worst, goldfish will fatten up on the eggs of native species. No matter where you live, no matter how sentimental you are over your unwanted pet, don't set Nemo free when it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> you and I are both learning. Don't let your goldfish go free. I guess you, you're probably gonna to wanna to dispose of it somehow. Uh, the key thing is when you've got unwanted pets, you can see if pet shops will take them back. Yeah, but if you're gonna euthanize them though, putting them in the freezer is the, humo is, the is the most humane way. Now is that really the most humane way to kill a fish is by letting them slowly suffocate in a freezer. It's not like they're gonna instantly freeze, I don't think, I mean, I feel like my method of killing fish would be much more humane. You get a quick, simple death with no pain or whatsoever. I'm pretty sure my way is the best way, but regardless, we've got to take care of these goldfish before they become a gigantic problem in here. We've currently got six goldfish in here. We've got four bass. I feel like we need some more bass in here to take care of him. So let's head over to the lake. We've made it out. We are at Centennial Lake, which is actually the lake I consider to be my home lake. You probably don't see me make too many videos here because, well, this lake sucks. But there's a very specific reason why I came out to this lake today. You'll find out soon enough. Place is still filled with duck poop, I see. Not much has changed. Let's take a look at the water clarity. It is, hmm, quite muddy, I'd say. All right, time to make a move. 10 casts, no bites. The key to fish in this lake is to keep on moving. It's difficult to do from the bank, but if you have the experience, you should do all right. Got a nice little cove right here, looking flooded. I mean, in theory, it should hold something. Oh my gosh, what a cast. Oh, safe. Hmm. Ah, sure it looks good back here, but yet again, not even a sniff. Ah, ah, it stings. 
I just hit my leg into a stingy nettle bush. Ooh, woo, that's fruity. Ah, okay, let's recap. So far we've hit three different locations, struck out, ah, at each of them. I mean, I hit that thing dead on. So I've moved on, we've got high muddy water. I feel like the fish are gonna be stacked right here. The riprap bank near the dam. In my opinion, the fish should be moving up real shallow, feeding in these, ah, feeding in these rocks. Quiz time, we're fishing a shallow riprap bank in muddy water, what bait do you want to throw? If you guessed square bull crankbait, you'd be correct. Let me show you guys the power of this bait right here. Assuming that the fish are where I think they should be. Oh, that's in the first cast. Oh, he got off. Guys, what did I tell you? Oh, okay, that's a snag. That first one was 100% a fish show. And I see some fish activity. All good things. Oh, that guy got a fish, look at him. He's got a bluegill. The Cormor got a bluegill right there. If he can catch fish, I can catch fish. There's, there's one. That's what I'm talking about. Feels like the perfect size too. Oh, oh what the, is this even a, Wait, I'm getting very confused here. I'm not even sure if this is a, no, it's a bass. He got snagged. That's why he's fighting so strange. Oh, fish number one. Dang, man, 13 inch fish. Any other Maryland Lake and this fish would be going into my pond, but not from Centennial. Bye bye. So Centennial Lake is managed under trophy bass conditions which means I can keep five fish under 12 inches or I can keep four fish under 12 inches and one fish above 15 inches. So we're actually looking to catch small fish today, which is why I'm throwing this very small KVD square bill. Instead of the normal 2.5 version, I'm throwing the 1.5 version. But you know, it's all good. I know exactly where these fish are and we will catch plenty more, trust me. Oh, oh, that's perfect. That's the one we need right here. Get, oh. You guys see that? This is a seven inch goldfish punisher. Let's get him in the bucket. All right, my friend, you will be in your new home soon enough. Very feisty. The bubbler's on. Let's get some more. Oh, oh, I saw him come. That's perfect size. You could literally see him. Oh, get on the bank. You could see him, he was hanging. Look, look at this guys. That fish was hanging out right in those rocks, probably feeding on crawfish. I literally saw him dart out of the rocks and destroy my Senko. Perfect little eight incher right here. That is gonna be a nice addition for area 11. Get in there, bud. Ooh. Stay. Oh man, classic. Four hours of fishing, three little dinks, and now it's pouring out here. This is Centennial Lake in a nutshell. Oh, oh yes. That's the one I needed. Oh, it just stopped raining. I'm gonna be late for a dentist appointment. Get in the bank. That's exactly what I needed. Nice little nine incher right here. Whoa, geez, almost. Stop, 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 stop. Don't hurt yourself. You need to go into area 11. Stop, 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 stop. Good boy. Okay, time check, 10.30. I've got a 11 o'clock dentist appointment, 20 minutes away. All right, there we go. We gotta drop these fish off, then we're going. Ah, 
This guy's heavy. Hang in there, my friends. You will soon be at your new home. Let's get through here. Ah. Okay. Who's gonna be first? There we go. Nice little dude. Oh, 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 well, well, there's one of them. Who's gonna be second? Ah, these guys are feisty. Woo! Got you, buddy. Whew. Member number two of the. No! Goldfish Annihilation Squad. Hopefully, this last one will let me get some underwater footage of him. Got you. Right. Ah. You guys are making this extremely anticlimactic. You're looking a little skinny, bud. Let's try to get you something to eat. And in here, you should find plenty of food. Ready, bud? All right. All right, bud. What I want you to do is go find those goldfish. Go, go get them. Go, go, go. Go. One final thing before we end today's video. As you know, the battle against the duckweed wages on. And right here behind me, I've got two Amazon boxes that I bought based on y'all's recommendations. And I believe these items contain the key to defeating the dreaded duckweed. Stay tuned, because next time at Area 11, it's gonna be a massacre.